All right guys, so on today's field tips, I'm gonna show you how I put snake skins on the back of a self bow. All right, so we're gonna be working on a two piece bow today. I've got the other limb, the top limb right here, but everything, the, the, the entire process is gonna be exactly the same if you're, if you're uh, putting skins on a one piece bow. So I've got my skins here. They've been soaking in water for a couple of hours. They're very, uh, very much rehydrated, very pliable. And first thing I'm gonna do is just lay these things on here and kind of get them pre-fitted before I put any glue on there. I just wanna make sure everything is gonna lay on here just right. The skins are long enough. Um, and down here around my knock, uh, my tip overlays, I'm gonna do some trimming so that these things will fit around these overlays really well. These are copperhead skins. I got them uh, from Anthony Tyndall and I'll put his contact information down in the, uh, in the video description. So if you guys wanna get some, you can get a hold of him. Man, that's gonna look, that's gonna look sharp. So this bow, has a lot of uh, snaky grain to it. And so this skin is wide enough so you, you could just run it straight, but it's gonna look a lot cooler if you move the skin left and right to follow that snake. All right, that looks like everything that's gonna lay on there really nice. So up here around the tip overlays, I'm just gonna lay the skin on there and uh, make sure it's gonna cover everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw some glue on here. And once we get some glue on it, I'll go ahead and take my knife and just kind of trim around this a little bit so that it comes to either side of that uh, overlay right there. And I've got some Type Bond 3 that I'm gonna be using. Now, uh, before I put this on here, I wanna just mention that I did uh, take some 220 sandpaper and just kinda scuff this up just a little bit. And then also, so this is sinew backed. I've got, uh, it's an Osage bow, it's got a sinew backing on it. And it's got about five or six coats of true oil on top of it to seal that, uh, to seal that sinew and to seal the, and protect the wood. Um, I scuffed that up. Now my glue and my skin's gonna go on top of all of that. And then once we get done, we'll put more true oil on top of everything. Uh, I do want to glue. I've got a little bit of place right here on the end where my sinew's lifting up a little bit. I wanna make sure I get that glued down. Just gonna go ahead and lay these skins on here, scale side up. We'll worry about smoothing everything out here in just a little bit. Beautiful. All right, so now that we've got it laid on here, we just wanna make sure that there's not any air bubbles underneath. See, there's a big air bubble right there. I'm just gonna push that out. Now 
Now I'm just going to take my knife and kind of trim up around this tip overlay a little bit. All right, so I'm ready to wrap this skin to hold it down to the bow. Now I'm just going to use an ace bandage. Uh, they work really good, uh, but they, uh, I don't know what these cost, but they're not super cheap. You can just use an old t-shirt, just cut rings off the bottom of it. It works really good. And then um, the way that I preferred to do it is just to take the legs off some old like spandex pants you can put the leg over this and then hang a pipe or something heavy down here and it just holds everything even. And the reason I like doing it like that is because when you wrap around these things, uh, sometimes you can shift, if you're not real careful, you'll shift the skin back and forth and uh, lift the edges and create air bubbles and stuff under there. Um, I don't have a, I don't think I have a video showing how I do that, but it's, it, it certainly is uh, in my book. But again, make sure there's no air bubbles. <clears throat> and then just start wrapping this thing. Being very careful not to shift the skin back and forth. Oops. You don't want to wrap this with something that isn't going to breathe. <clears throat> it needs to have some airflow so these, these skins will dry out. So I'm just holding this snake skin up underneath the bow to keep it from pushing up and over that limb when I wrap over it. And I'm not going super tight, but tight enough that um, I'm stretching it out a little bit to just to hold that skin down. All right, so we've got both limbs wrapped, and now we just gotta let this, um, leave it wrapped until those are dry. I'll give it a day or two. We'll unwrap it, and then we'll continue on. All right, so it's been, hmm, I think four days since I put this, uh, this bow with the snake skin on it in here. <clears throat> I actually unwrapped it after two days just to um, get a little better circulation around it. But it's pretty warm in here. I've got a bunch of other projects in here I'm working on. I've got a fan in here blowing on it, circulating air, and I've got two heat lamps in this box. But this thing, this is cured out perfectly. Now we just need to go ahead and trim this so that it fits perfectly on the back of the bow. Man, that thing is gonna look freaking sweet. 
So before I close that up, oh, I'm gonna, we got a couple of billets here that I'm gonna join into a, a two piece. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in here. So the reason I had this, all these staves in this drying box here is I'm down in Florida. It's uh, winter time, it's cold, it's wet, and things just don't dry out down here. So I've got a couple of different projects. I've got this Eastern Red Cedar bow here. Uh, I've got another Eastern Red Cedar stave down there. Uh, and if you've been following along with the, uh, some of the other uh, videos I've done, we're gonna take these and make sinew backed Eastern Red Cedar bows. So, um, you know, if you're interested in following along with that, you might wanna go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And this box, um, if you, I know there's, there's gonna be some of you that are interested in, you know, how this works and how the best way to build one is. And I'll do, um, I'll do a review on this thing uh, probably over on the Patreon site. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead on over there and do that. Let's get started on this. All right, so to trim these skins to the back of the bow, all we're gonna use is just a regular old 12 inch uh, Nicholson mill file, a sanding block with some 220 on it, and a good sharp pocket knife or a cabinet scraper will work just fine as well. Now the one important thing that you've gotta remember when you are, are cutting or trimming this skin to the back of the bow is that you, when you're using your file or your sanding block or whatever you're cutting this with, you only want to go from the skin into the bow. You don't wanna be dragging this thing back and forth because if you do that, you stand, more of a, you stand more of a chance of lifting that skin off the back of the bow and tearing it. And so if you just go into the bow, uh, this file will cut that skin and fit it right to the back of the bow. Now, another thing that you uh, might wanna look at is some guys like for their snake skin to wrap all the way around and they'll actually cut it on the belly side, the belly edge, and that just causes that, uh, you know, it leaves the snake skin on the edge of the bow. I, for this bow, I'm not gonna do that. I'm, act, I'm, not, I'm gonna actually trim it so that it fits perfectly on the back and then the sides are gonna be exposed. So just to start, I'm gonna, um, put my file on there, I'm just gonna start pushing down. Now this bow, is backed with sinew. And so I don't want to angle my rasp or my file over here like this because if I do, that sinew goes all the way to the edge of the bow. And if I, if I angle it too much, I'm gonna be getting into my sinew, which wouldn't really cause any structural problems. It's just going to um, make the skin lay on top of the sinew. And one of the reasons that I'm uh, snake skinning this bow is to completely cover that sinew and help protect it against the elements. And so I want that skin to wrap all the way over the top of that sinew and actually come down the side of the bow just a little bit. So I'm, I'm filing more straight up and down instead of angling the bow or angling the file. So I'm just using this knife to scrape this excess glue off. I'm not scraping the, the actual skin itself. So my blade is not coming in contact with the skin. And the reason being, if you, if you try to scrape that, you're gonna tear the skin. To, to clean up these edges, you need to use your sanding block. Mm -hmm. 
go from the skin into the bow. Don't be running it back and forth like this because you're going to tear your skin. Um, so we're just going to use this to kind of clean up those rough file edges where we where we cut the skin with the file. So I'm, I'm uh, making a stroke this way. I'm picking it up and coming back, making a stroke. I'm not, not sanding back and forth. So now I just need to clean up any glue and stuff that's on the bow. Again, when you're sanding, don't, don't sand the skin. Um, and especially don't sand it against the grain. All the scales and stuff are running this way. And so like when we take off the scales, we'll go ahead and do that now. Just using a little bit of steel wool and just going with the grain. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to rub it like this because all these, uh, all these little scales have, the skin actually has little flaps. And if you go against the grain, you'll lift those flaps up and could potentially tear the skin. And so when I rub this um, skin with the steel wool, I'm just going with the grain. Some, uh, going at a little bit of an angle sometimes can help get those scales off. I've seen guys do this with just by taking tape, masking tape, and putting it on here, rubbing it down, and then peeling the tape off. That works well, but this works just as good and I don't have any tape. Now you can, if you want to, you can leave these scales on here. I've seen guys do that just by taking uh, cyanoacrylate, like a super glue, and, and putting a, a, a layer or a coat of super glue on there and with a glove tan, um, just uh, putting that super glue down in there. And what that'll do is get all up underneath those scales and kind of set those scales in place. But uh, I don't think there's any reason to, to leave the scales on there. It doesn't make any, in my opinion anyway, it doesn't make it look any better. So I'm just gonna take them off. And I can tell right there, you hear that? I got a bubble, air bubble under there. So around these knocks, before I glued this skin on here, I didn't really take a whole lot of time to trim the skin to the, the, um, these tip overlays. And so I am just gonna go ahead and right now use my pocket knife to kinda trim that skin to where it lays right at the base of those tip overlays. Just peel that up, get rid of it. You know, if you're more concerned with the, the little details like this, you could take some time before you glue this down and, and really trim the skin to the, to the overlays, but I'm not that detail oriented, so I didn't do that. So now that I've got that, I'll just take, take this sandpaper and kind of clean it up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Where's my steel wool? Again, just going from the skin to the wood, not back and forth. Didn't look bad. 
All right, so we've got our snake skin all trimmed and fit perfectly to the back of the bow. Everything's kind of sanded down and smooth. Now what we need to do is address any air bubbles that may have been left underneath this skin. And to find air bubbles, all you've got to do is rub your finger up and down this limb and you can hear them. If there's a hollow spot underneath the skin, it'll make a swishing sound. So if you, I'll put this by the mic so you can hear it. So this is what it should sound like. And here's what an air bubble sounds like. You hear that? So when you find one of those, you should be able to, to press on it and actually feel it, feel that void under there. So all you've got to do to address those things is take a sharp little knife and just make a little slit in line with the limb of the bow. Find where it's, find where it is. Make a little slit. You can do it between the scales, and it doesn't have to be a big one. And then just take a little bit of super glue and put in there. And then you can work that super glue around with your fingers. Let's see here, I'm going to take this apart. Put a little bit of super glue in there. And then just kind of work it into all the little, push it into all the little recesses. And you should be able to, if you go between the scales, when this thing is set and dry, you shouldn't even be able to tell where you cut. I want to just go ahead and put super glue anywhere that I have this snake skin, anywhere that it's transitioning from, from skin into wood. So that, that joint, that border, I want to uh, put a bead of super glue around, around that and uh, smear that around. And so what this is doing, so I'm going to go around the whole edge of this snake skin. And what this is going to do is that super glue, that thin, penetrating super glue is going to penetrate into the snake skin and when it dries, when it cures, it's going to make it very hard and so you're going to have a nice transition. It's going to fill in that void uh, or that little small step down between the skin and the wood. And then uh, once you do your uh, finish sanding and coat it with your true oil, uh, you're not going to be able to feel that transition at all. All right, so the super glue is all cured out. And if we take our fingers and rub up and down the edge when we put that super glue, it's pretty rough. So what we need to do now is just take some 220 paper and just sand this edge down. Now, anywhere that you put glue, super glue onto the hide, you should be able to sand that and not raise up those little feathery things like you would if it didn't have any glue on there. That glue should have penetrated and basically solidified that skin. And once you get done with your 220, you can take some triple alt steel wool. Just do the same thing. Just be careful not to get up on the skin and start sanding like this because like I said, the, uh, if you sand the wrong way on this skin, um, the, those little flaps that where the scales were attached will lift up and you could potentially tear your snake skin. Just sanding and putting the steel wool right on that edge where I put that glue. Now we're ready to go ahead and seal this thing up. And what I, uh, prefer using is just uh, true, sto true oil gunstock finish. I put five, six, seven coats of this on, uh, on these bows and this stuff is very, very durable. Uh, I've never had any trouble with it at all. So before 
I put this on, I'm going to just take a clean rag and just try to wipe any kind of dust or anything like that that might be on this. Wipe that off. And then just take your rag, put a little bit of oil on there. And right now, these skins, the, the pattern on these things are, is fairly dull. But once you put a little bit of this oil on there, man, that's going to make that pattern really stick out. And you'll see that here in just a second. So you put, put a coat of this stuff on here, let it sit. And it doesn't take, depending on the humidity, it doesn't take all that, all, all that long to dry. And then just throw you another coat on there. Now, if you leave this stuff, um, just wipe it on there, let it dry. It's really shiny. And so um, if you're hunting with your bow, you might not want it super shiny like that. So just take some steel wool and um, kind of knock that, that sheen down a little bit, but you can see how much that brought that pattern out. 